Looks like we're getting ready to blast off. Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. Well, I think it's time that we get this thing blasted underneath. It's uh, gonna be a dirty job and someone's gotta do it and it might as well be me. So in attempt to try and uh, siphon up a bit of the, uh, the garnet that I'm using, um, I've just put a bit of black plastic down. It's not big enough and that's all I had. And I figured I've got about probably 10 bags of garnet anyway. So if I waste a bit, I'll waste a bit, no big deal. But what we're going to do is, uh, I've taken the, the side panel off and we're just going to uh, go in here and just uh, blast these rails and any anything that basically is going to get covered up by the floor that I can't get to from underneath. So we'll, we'll blast in there. I'm also going to do in here, just these chassis rails. And again, that little front apron there that's going to get the new floor tacked to. We'll blast that too. And... Probably underneath the um, the back guards, and I would say in the in the engine bay too. I think in here needs needs to get um, blasted as well. So, and underneath underneath it's going to be absolute torture, but we'll give it a go. I mean, gearbox obviously and front beam are going to come out anyway, so they'll get um, done once this thing's back on the lift. I can just drop the beam out and um, give that a clean up and paint it black. You know, the, the idea is, is we want this thing to look pretty Mickey Mouse underneath. Uh, pretty much the same as, as Paul's uh, single cab. So, uh, I've got my suit on. I've pretty much, yeah, I've got my suit on. And uh, I'm going to get a respirator and a cover. And, uh, yeah, get started. What I'm using, uh, obviously, that's my big compressor, so... You know 620 litres per minute twin motor it'll still run flat stick but like it won't stop because if anyone has done sandblasting before and this is the big pot too um you need a ton of air and realistically if you're going to do it at home uh on a regular basis, as well you know you're going to need three phase and you're going to need a a 10 to 20 horsepower compressor really to keep up with it so this is going to struggle um but you know i'm only doing small amounts i've got a tungsten tar carbide tip on the end of um of this guy but you know it is only a six mil hole so you know it's going to be uh it's going to be battle town but we'll get it we'll get it to work not looking for absolute perfection it's just really just to get a lot of the gunk and real heavy rust off it we're going to put we're going to coat this whole thing in fahrenheit anyway go from there so all right let's get blasting <laughs> Okay, so after the damage, <laughs> oh, I don't know, we'll see. Yeah, it hasn't done too bad of a job. It's it, This garnet's probably a little bit finer than what I wanted, so it hasn't really stripped it right back to bare metal. Um, it kind of has a bit down there. But all in all, I mean, I'm just trying to get the real heavy stuff off it, which uh, it did through the girders there. Uh, and I did a little bit in the engine bay, but... Um, yeah, I'm not sure about this pot. This is a bigger one that I'm, the, I've used a smaller pot than this one before and it worked. The pressures seem to be, I mean, I've got tons of pressure. I've got a hundred, I mean, I can take it right up to 150 PSI, but I'm just having issues with the flow. It's kind of pulsating and, and uh, it's not really doing what it's, um, I had the smaller 10, 10 kilo one, I think it was. And um, that seemed to work a lot better. That's what I blasted my orange bus with the entire bus too, and it worked um, a lot better than this one. So 
I'm not sure there's got an adjustment on the valves I think to get it to get the happy medium but uh, look for for what we're doing here this is this is going to be fine I mean it's it's cleaned up the metal all I'm going to do now is get the um, the Fahrenheit rust converter slash primer all in one and then hit it with the epoxy that'll take care of that whole area there this bit here I've just got a little bit more to go inside there we'll just give it another just sweeping up all the all the stuff on the bottom now we'll do it again Righto guys, so we have a a package in the house from Steve up at Das Resto. And as you can see, we've got a whole lot of funky green panels. These are all the classic fab stuff. So we've got the floor for the, the back. We have the inner and outer valance for the front. We've got the nose cone. We've got the heater pipe that runs underneath the chassis. And we have the battery tray and we also have this piece here which is the uh, side near the back uh, passenger down near the passenger uh, back guard um, we're still waiting on the front floor and also uh, the hump the transmission hump at the back so they're on the way at some point anyway uh, at least we've got some stuff here to get on to the front now so we can actually uh, start cleaning up the chassis rails uh, treating that with all with uh, the rust uh, converter and then we can um, start welding on the front valance and we probably have to do a little bit of cutting as well I think we yeah we have to replace this guy here on both sides uh, just that lower portion so we'll get those done as well all right let's move on Right, uh, those two are out. I think next is going to be... We're going to have to take the steering wheel off. Oh, that's always a fun job. Okay, so... We've got some rusty bolts. We've got to get the steering column plate unmounted off the parcel shelf. And then another strangety for a 55 is this little plate here. And that, again, this, that guy right there. That's not in a normal splitty either. So, quite weird. Good good seeing all these quirky little 1955 items. Like this bus was only a month off, off being a barn door. Pretty sad that it isn't a barn door, but that's just the way it is, you know? We've got to get that cover plate off and undo those three. Hopefully they'll play ball. Let's see how we go. Can we get this into there? No, we can't. Can we get it with my...
don't know. Those are out, minus the busted one. We'll have to uh, chuck a, um, a beater welder on that and wind him out. We're not going to use those bolts anyway, they're so rusty. Okay, let's uh, get on to removing the steering wheel. Right, oh, no, so the first things first, we've got to get the nut off, and that is majorly rusted on. So we're going to have to use heat and a bit of penetrine. Watch the lovely colours. Oh, there's greens, look at that. That's the copper, I think. Too psycho with it. Look at that. One burning hot nut. Right, now comes the fun part. Let's see. Let's see if we can smash this uh, steering wheel into 100 pieces. No, let's not do that. We definitely don't want to do that. We want to get this off in one piece. Now, interesting that huh, there's another quirky difference with this steering wheel. It doesn't have a cancellation plate on the underneath of it. And no provision for it either, so... Uh, yeah, obviously the indicator stalk um, is totally different to the later splitties because underneath, as you can see there, there is no cancellation ring that screws onto the bottom of the steering wheel. Now you can see there, it does have some mighty cracks in it too, so the chances of us getting this off in one piece... I'm calling 40%. Let's see. <laughs> Let's see. Here's my ghetto puller that I fashioned. Yeah, made that out of some wheat bix and peanut butter. And it should work. It's it should work. We'll see what happens. Right, I wish me luck. I'm going in for the kill. Yeah, I think I'm just going to have to uh, fully send it. <laughs> There's no other way we're getting this thing off. So here we go. Off or not off. Give it the shock. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Might apply a bit more heat, see if she goes bang. Got it. And it didn't break. Woohoo! How's that for ya? I'm amazed. Ta da! 
And it's in one piece. Woohoo! Gotta love that. So there you have it. One steering wheel removed. Righto guys, so on to getting the steering box out. So what we've got to do is undo the ball joint here to the drag link. And that's always fun times. And undo a couple of bolts here. And then we can drop the uh, steering box out from underneath. Interesting thing that the later split screens don't have anymore is that channel, that little cover plate that I took out from here, I reckon they made that so that you could rotate the steering box so you didn't have to have the bus off the ground so high in order to drop the box out. You could just rotate it forward and take it out. I'm not sure why they got did away with that later on. Maybe they just thought, you know, a full solid floor would be better. And another interesting thing is, you can see here, there's a rubber block underneath the clutch pedal. And it's like it's brand new. Now this is a 1955 bus and that rubber is, it's like, I think that the Chinese need to watch this and say, hey, let's get your, your rubber products up to scratch because, you know, th that thing wouldn't last two minutes in today's uh, quality that they've got. So yeah, just interesting, it, you know, look at it and it's like it's brand new. Yeah, I always shake my head with that sort of stuff. Anyway, that's the way we the way we go on, isn't it? Um, another interesting thing that's totally different on this bus to the later is the handbrake lever. You can see it's cocked on an angle, and it's totally mounted in a totally different position as well. It's actually further further forward in the cab, and the gear stick is as well. So yeah, there's little subtle changes in the early models, but anyway, it'll, let's get this uh, steering box out. It's very, very, very greasy, so I might get dirty. Mm. Anyway, let's go. Now we've got ourselves our puller and that's a new one because the other one I had fell apart. So all we're going to do here is just back off the, the nut just a tad. I don't expect us to get much of a fight out of this. But you never know these days. Back it out about that far. Put on our little special tool, like so, and it should get a crack. Now, of course, it's not the size that I have. It's all right. See, when you got the right tools, things are easy. Right, uh, now we can undo these guys here and we should be able to get this guy out. Now, I'll tell you what, this steering box is in really good condition. I'm, I'm amazed it's got no play in it. If I just grab the arm here and move it, there's 
Yeah, I suppose that is a tiny bit. That's probably just a worm. But apart from that, it must have been rebuilt. Oh no! Oh, there we go. Inside and out's got movement. Yeah, it'll it'll need to be rebuilt. They always do. So here's the uh, steering box, uh, we've got that out of the vehicle and we might just chuck it in the sand and blasting cabinet down the track and uh, give it a paint or, or spray up black and um, we'll have a look inside it too, just re-oil it up and go from there. But uh, I reckon that is it for me for today, I'm going to go and get a coffee and I will see you in the next episode. And uh, yeah, cheers for all the new subscribers as well. And we'll see you in the next one. You.